Hey guys, how are you? Um, I'm about to go live for Her Hollywood with Jasmine of Elisa Valentina Agency. I am super, super, super excited. Um, she's a nail artist that has worked with a lot of cool celebrities and a lot of fun campaigns. And she is going to be an amazing tool for those of you who have um, products that you are trying to photograph because she knows all about hands and keeping them healthy and ready to go. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Good. Uh, let's go ahead and for those of you guys who are on, introduce you, Jasmine, and kind of what you do in the industry and why you're so important. Okay. So I am a nail artist. I am based in Connecticut and New York City or New York uh, area. And I've been doing nails for the last six years. Um, I've been working for myself for the last two. But um, I started, you know, having a passion for fashion, which kind of led to beauty. Um, I attended FIDM, which is the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising in LA in 2009. Um, not really knowing exactly what I wanted to do, but I know that, you know, it was a creative atmosphere and I was challenged creatively and um, eventually I went on and, you know, realized like, okay, nails was my thing. Um, I, I'm an artist initially. So, you know, I just decided, okay, nails is going to be my medium. And how can I tap into the fashion industry and the beauty industry doing what I love? Um, so so I, 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 just to stop you for just a second, there's a lot yeah. of cool things in there. I love that you went to fit them. I am yeah. in Los Angeles, as you know, and that's literally right down the street from me. And so many amazing people oh, went uh -huh. to fit them. So did you run across any of those people? And how did that like impact your studies and everything that you have done? So I, I mean, like, say... didn't, um, I, oh, I just forgot her name, the costumer from oh. Black Panther. <laughs> Why did I forget oh, her name? Oh, yes, 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 yes. But it's like there, there so really many are people. There are really so many people who did Ruth go Carter. to them. I don't even know all of them. Like when I went, I remember Lauren Conrad from the Hills was going. Oh, that's yeah, uh, I remember that. Yeah, and Nick. Uh, I don't want to say his last name wrong, but Nick Varios from Project Runway was like the teacher there. Oh, so cool. it was. It was definitely like. At the time, I actually was living in Washington State when I learned about FITM. Oh, okay. So I was on the West Coast. and So you're they, originally a West Coaster then? No, I'm originally a Connecticut. I'm a, oh, originally okay. a East Coaster, but I moved to Washington State for a couple years in high school. And when I found out about the school, I was like, okay, that's the school that I want to go to. And it's funny because on the East Coast, F, um, FIT is just like so big and it's so popular. So people are like, why not FIT? And I'm like, I'm going to LA. Like I've, I've, I've been <laughs> like, to I'm going where the good weather is. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I've been to New York. I'm, You're I'm, like, I'm going to hang with Lauren Conrad from the Hills and it's going to be amazing. <laughs> Pretty much, you know, like I, I was born in Long Island. I, I went to New York my whole life. My, my family is New York natives. So I was like, I just want something different. I love LA. Um, and LA does definitely does have a special place in my heart. But even before attending the school, they had three days of fashion where you met other people who were in the industry, who had success stories. And I just felt like, you know, I'm going to be that person one day. Um, so I decided to go to FIDM and I went for two years and I networked. I met like so many people. I actually interned at Gen Lux, which was, um, it still is an independent magazine in Beverly Hills. I'm not sure if you ever heard of it. Um, and I interned at Look Los Angeles, which was like a little PR firm. And that's where I started blogging. And now I blog on the side too for my, on my website. Oh, yeah. What do you blog um, about? Do you blog just about nails or about oh. everything? It started off with nails, but actually I'm doing a segment where, um, or a series highlighting FIDM alumni. So, which I'm sure I, they're all successful and yeah. you have amazing people. To yes. From. And it's so cool to see like how we've blossomed and transformed into our own niches, like what yeah. we really love to do and how we took our creative um, elements from school and you know how we implement it now it's just like a wide array of creativity I love it 
Yay. So you were an artist first. Did you draw in Canvas before you decided to become an artist for nails? So I, it was like paper, paper yeah. and pencils, <laughs> paper and crayons, paper and markers. I used to paint. I mean, I would go to like the dollar store. They used to have these boxes of wooden sticks. And when my parents had birthdays, I would like create little wooden, um, like boxes or like houses, like just anything. I was very crafty. Oh. I was very crafty. I would look at cartoons and start drawing. Like uh, my dad actually is an artist too, but he never, uh, he never did anything with his uh, artistic ability. So I definitely inherited the trait from him. Um, and I'm able to, you know, invest in it and, and spread it and continue um, working on it. So so when you came to do nails, you're all of a sudden were like, nails are going to be my canvas that I paint on. What was that transition and how did that look for you? And were you still so, in LA? When did you move back I'll, from New York? So I'm, I'm going to rewind a little bit. When I was younger, my mom used to go to the nail salons. Of course. Okay, cool. Everybody, everybody used to go to the nail salons and I would see the fake tips on the floor and I would like grab them at the <laughs> at the end of the you know at the end of her appointment, and I would go home and I would paint them. That, so that was well, that's unsanitary, but <laughs> and you got when your you're practicing. young. <laughs> when you're young, you don't even think like how no. unsanitary that is. Until now, you're like, yeah, I would never do that. So I don't <laughs> advise anybody doing that. But um, <laughs> I I would do it, and then I would go home and I would like take her polish and paint them. So that was my first real experience of like painting nails then as I got older I used to get my nails done so I used to see how they did nails and it still never really clicked until maybe I was oh I think I was uh maybe like um in high school and I wanted to do cosmetology like I was interested in hairs and skin hair skin and nails and all that stuff and I decided to go to fit them instead so I would on the side with my friends, you know, paint their nails, do designs on myself, like little things like that. When I went to FIDM, I would paint flowers on my roommate's nails. And she's like, oh my God, you're so good. I'm like, literally it's five dots, you know, like it's the easiest thing. <laughs> and you're like, if you're so, if I'm so good, can I charge you? That'll be $20 a nail. I know. But see that, <laughs> even like in, in 2009, People weren't having the mindset of like side hustles and how can you make more yeah. money. And I mean, like, the, or the people who did have those mindsets were, were way ahead, which is a good thing because I didn't really get into that thought until I actually went to nail school, which I went after getting my associates in LA. I came back to the East Coast and I was getting my bachelor's and I went to state school, which I love, Southern Connecticut State University. Yeah, but I wasn't doing anything creative. And I remember saying to a classmate, like, you know, I, I want to do nails, or I want to go to nail school. She was like, well, why don't you just go? And I'm like, well, I'm in college, I'm a full time student, I'm working, like, I don't have time. And she ended up calling the school for me, they called me back to do a little tour, and it ended up fitting perfectly in my summer vacation. Like, oh, perfect perfectly in my summer vacation I did it and then a month later I was working in a spa so it's almost like it was meant to be it was, it was for it you was, it was meant to be it was meant and to that's be. how your side hustle became then your career yes yes you know I will say too consequently after I did get my associates and my bachelor's I still wanted to work in the industry but I didn't really know like, I, I'm into editorial and things like that, but it was yeah. hard to break into those industries, not really knowing people. I mean, I even interned at Ebony Magazine. Oh, um, but cool. still, you know, it's it's kind of, you have to really be in the right place at the right time or know the right people. Yeah. Um, and, like, no one was calling me back for jobs. And, mm -hmm. you know, I was just, like, getting so desperate and, um, I remember like I would apply to nail jobs and everybody would call me back and even trying to work in New York it was like Connecticut is still well actually they just changed it now where now we're a licensed state before okay. 2020 um, Connecticut was not required to be licensed so all these other for states, nails for nails oh yeah. gosh <laughs> so all these other states 
had you know those requirements and even though I was already doing nails and working I was certified but it wouldn't you know transfer to any other state so it was like okay you either have to go back to school spend more and I was just like I don't want to do that I just want to work like I, I know that I can work I know I have the talent um, and I ended up getting an opportunity from um, this woman who let me work under her as an apprentice and that's how I started working in the city and then oh, eventually nice. I, I'm licensed now but I remember even like thinking like I'm gonna move back to LA because I just feel like I have more networks there and I felt like I yeah. can you know do nails there like, I, I would have gotten my license but it was just gonna be like a plan to restart and then when I started working in New York I just started meeting really great people and people that believed in me and people that would give me opportunities and then I kind of uh you know escalated after that so let's back up a little bit for people on here who don't know how nails directly relate to entertainment so there's a lot of areas that you can work in in nails and entertainment um on set doing nails for like yeah. food shoots or product shoots or whatever it may be and then you also can do just celebrity nails for like red carpets or whatever because they're in town and aren't near their regular nail artists. So right. do you do all of those? And are there other fun situations that you've done nails for in entertainment? Um, so I will say I've actually gotten, I haven't done a lot, but the things that I have done have been in different areas. So I was saying- and person I'm gonna stop you right there <laughs> because Jasmine is really talented, you guys. She's being oh, humble when she says she hasn't done a lot. Okay, continue. <laughs> well, I feel like I have so much more to do, but um, the one thing that comes to mind was QVC. So mm -hmm. um, it's like a home shopping network and I never watched it growing up, but you could turn the channels and you see it like playing all day, every day. And I remember someone reaching out to me on Instagram and they wanted to interview me because they had, they were marketing for a uh, gel manicure DIY kit. And before, you know, even the QVC thing came up, they just wanted to like take me out to coffee, see what I was about, see my experience and all this. And months later, they ended up emailing me like, are you available for QVC tomorrow? In they took you out to coffee as like a, a nail interview? Yeah, yeah. That's so and funny. Like, Did you do like, their nails too? Or what no, was that? No, no, they just wanted to they chat and get your chat. vibe. It was just the chat. And um, the coffee was good. And so was the cookies. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and obviously you, they liked you. <laughs> yeah, and they liked me. I remember I was on set actually assisting um, someone else. And I get this email like, are you available for QVC? Like, me? Like, Am I available? When tomorrow? Where's QVC? Pennsylvania? Oh my gosh. So um, I ended up doing it twice. It was a beauty segment and a gifting suite segment. And I was the demo model. So I was like, I was on live TV. And, um, you know, it's, it's nerve wracking. But at the same time, it was like such a different experience that I had that really like pushed me and really taught me how to see like other things behind the scenes I mean a lot of different production does things differently you know behind the scenes and when you're live doing a little segment that's different than if you're on a movie set or whatever because yeah. I've also done Anne Hathaway and you know we had to be there like 4 59 a.m you know <laughs> and go to her trailer and do her nails and then you're out of there you don't even see what happened you know she was reciting yeah. her her um, script and things like that, like just trying to get ready. But at the same time, like you don't really always see what's going on. So there's just so many different elements. I mean, we've done the, uh, which we I learned not too long ago, we were on the Lime Rita commercial. Yeah, um, that was the job <laughs> from hell for me. So I'm glad it was good no. for you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I will say, and a lot of people don't know this too, for nails, sometimes you have the easiest job on set. Like literally, sometimes you have the easiest job as long as you know what you're doing. And you, like uh, Maria had mentioned earlier, you, you do what they ask you to do. And, you know, it's it could be hard for somebody else to do or it could be something that somebody else just 
does not want to do. But, you know, it's my craft and it's my passion. And I'll look at it, you know, as a canvas of art and somebody else might not. So, you know, for me, that was, it was a long day. You know, we were in a house, somebody's regular house, which also people don't think about either. We were in somebody's yeah. normal house. Um, there was cupcakes and lime marita everywhere. <laughs> And, um, you know, that's another side of entertainment. So I just think overall, there's a lot that I, I guess there is a lot I have done, but there's so much more I want to experience. Yeah. And I mean, but that's true for anybody, right? You should want to keep growing in your craft. Yeah. I feel like even if you're at the top of your game, you can always learn and grow more. And if you yeah. think you've capped it, like you're not doing enough, work. you need to work harder. That's very true. <laughs> So what have you been doing now in quarantine to work harder at your craft since you aren't out doing other people's nails? No. So I will say quarantine has been filled with highs and lows. I mean, yeah. the beginning of quarantine was like this uncertainty, like, um, okay, I've never experienced this before. I've never experienced this before. So we're going to just be, you know, closed for two weeks and we're not going to do anything. And you know, can't even do house calls. Like, what is this really, you know? And eventually yeah. I was like, well, for me, traveling and commuting from Connecticut to New York and everywhere, it's just, it's just crazy. It's a whirlwind. Like, you don't know where you are. You don't know what days it is. You just are doing it, you know? You're on autopilot. So I needed a hard reset and I really took advantage of like those first two weeks. Like I rested for a couple, but then I was like, started writing a list of things to do. And I was like, okay, you have to do this, 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 why you have two weeks to do it. Um, so what did I do? I started working on my SEO for my website. And oh, I'm you did that yourself? That's good. <laughs> yeah, I started researching. I started signing up for webinars. Um, for I started tweaking uh, my website. I started doing nail tutorials for people who had on extensions and wanted to remove them. I started trying to do more videos. Like I used to be on a radio show um, oh, and I cool. studied interpersonal and relational communications in college. So I should be able to be a little more vocal and speak a little bit more, but the nail girl in me always wanted to be like behind the scenes. I'm like, no, I don't want to be in front of the camera. Yeah. I want to be behind. <laughs> But uh, during quarantine, I realized how valuable it was to be present. You know, there were so many people who were confused and yeah. didn't know what was going to happen. And I just wanted to connect with my followers and my clients. Um, so, you know, doing the nail tutorials was great. I started blogging. Um, I started just really connecting with friends and family. Um, and I started going back to what I did best which was art and I started working on okay. um, more nail art so yeah so before we get into some of your fun nail art I have a question here um, from Jakari Star do you have concerns about your health and safety when you're doing house calls or have you not restarted yet and I think you said you haven't restarted yet but what are you looking to do to be safe when you do go back to work so that's a good question I have not started yet I have not did house calls and I do not plan on doing house calls until the state says it's okay to even resume to services because um, for me I personally was affected my best friend's father passed away a couple weeks ago and okay. you know I know people close to me who had the virus and that was like a wake-up call like at first it was like you know, you're nervous. I had anxiety at first, you know, just watching all the videos on social media and all yeah. that stuff. Uh, uh, it was so much information at once. Um, but when you start knowing people personally affected by it, I was like, oh, no, this is not worth it. Definitely. And I didn't do services. So I'm glad that I didn't because it would have made me even more paranoid. Yeah. Um, and I think the key... Uh, the key message here is really for people to kind of put things in perspective of like what is really important. And I always say my health doesn't have a price tag on it. 
um, and neither should yours. I mean, some yeah. people think that they're healthy and have no idea what's going on inside of their bodies. Yeah. Um, and then Very again, true. you know, to have a, a virus that you don't know what's going to do to your body, whether you think that you're okay or not, is just another layer. Um, so I just wanted to put that message like I love doing nails and I love talking to my clients and I love seeing you guys every two weeks, but it's not safe. You know, even they're starting to open up a little bit in certain places. Connecticut hasn't opened yet. I, I want to say we might be due for the end of June. Okay. Um, but, you know, don't just take precaution before you decide to go seek out somebody who's as desperate as you to do your nails because you don't know who they're um, in contact with. They don't know what they're even in contact with. Um, but I did order the nail table shield okay so i don't know if you guys have seen that the clear glass that separates the consumer from the um person the tech so when i do get the go ahead from my state i will be using that well that's go really ahead. smart yeah, yeah. i yeah. like that they have a shield um and yeah. let's i guess move on a little bit because we are running out of time and i want to show off some of your nail art if you have it by you did you oh, bring yeah. any of your nails so, she's I so talented, you guys. Oh, look, you put it in a little box this time. <laughs> I do, I do. So, okay, I will show you a few things. So, here is a nail ring, and it's MCM. Oh, so it's cute. like I created it. Oh, cute. It. And um, it literally, I started with like a tip that probably looks like something like this mm -hmm. and then i built acrylic on it and then i custom customized the color and i added you know a zipper and all that stuff and i made it into a ring so you can actually wear it that so, is kind of really creative mm -hmm. are you selling these so i i'm gonna do custom ones the goal is to create custom uh nail rings you know like these are more a part of my art collection I wanted to kind of start to do it and really see what it looked like and how much I could do of it so this is um, a ring but other things that I really have been working on I would say is like the Kobe series of a nail art RIP and then go to uh, Jasmine's page and check it out because it's she's so good so mm -hmm. talented you can see the details oh you can yeah. still, you kind of see them there too let's see if I could have a little bit of light here so it's a little blurry, but this is Kobe. So I drew him on a nail and then this is Gigi and Kobe. This is so cute. I love how talented you are. And do you want to just explain your process really quickly of how you get the people on the nails? And is this something like if someone comes into a salon and is like, I want Kobe on a nail, <laughs> do you say <laughs> come back so tomorrow? How does that work? When it comes to stuff like that, I do appreciate people letting me know ahead of time because something like this, I don't put a time frame on. I just kind of sit there and I'm like, you know, this is what, you know, this is what I want to draw. Let's see. If we can see Kadeem it. said that you're super dope and I have to say I agree. It's so amazing uh, how she does that. <laughs> thank you. So I actually use um, acrylic paint. A lot of artists actually use acrylic paint. It dries quick and you can actually layer over uh, like your mistakes or if you want to change the color and stuff. So um, I've, I kind of sit there and I really look at the detail and I just draw on top of the nail. I've seen different techniques where people will pencil, like draw with a pencil on the nail first and then paint it in. I don't do that. I just take a really small brush um, I'm trying to think if I have any brushes around me. I just take a real, a really small brush. I'll show you how small. And I feel like we're in your nail artist room now and you're just gathering yeah. supplies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Manicure table. So I take a really tiny brush and I have even a smaller one than this. And I just, you know, start mixing colors in. I start looking at the tones and the shades and um, that's another thing that I kind of learned in fashion school was how you can really, or even in art class, how you can really create like depth with shadows and lighting and all that stuff. 
Um, but Kobe Bryant, I had his uh, jersey since like the sixth grade. He's actually the only jersey that I wore um, and that I have. And then I went to LA and I lived down the street from the Staples Center. Yeah. So, you know, Kobe Bryant really meant a lot to, you know, the culture. It was so crazy that he passed away. Um, and when Nipsey Hussle passed away, I actually drew Nipsey Hussle on a ring. So that kind of inspired the Kobe series. Um, like I did a jersey, oh, the Lakers cute. jersey. But, I feel know, like you could put this stuff on eBay and it'll probably sell for like $5,000. <laughs> we do have a quick question from Palace Space. She said, I'm sorry if I missed this, but do you also draw on real nails? And I think that's probably different levels of drawing on real nails there, right? Yeah, so I do draw on real nails. Um, like I said, if people were to book me, um, if they told me like what they wanted, I could pretty much let you know what how much it would cost or how, how long it would take. Because there's different layers. Like for this, I really did a lot of detail on it because, you know, I had all the time in the world. Um, if I'm doing somebody else's nail and I realized too, as an artist, I could be a little harder on myself. So yeah. I could, could have probably did less than that. And somebody else would have been satisfied. <laughs> no, uh, but it's like, where's the fun <laughs> in that? You always need to challenge and do better yeah. for you. Like your art and craft isn't about anyone else, but you. It's that's very true. So, you know, I, I definitely do do it. I've, I've drawn on my nails and, you know, other people before. Cool. And then as like we have a little bit of time here, um, I thought it would be fun to share some of your favorite. There's so many at home manicure kits right now. Like I've seen static nails and clutch nails and so many different brands. And do you have your favorite brand of fake nails that you use right now? So this is the great thing about being in quarantine too. I was able to stay up until 2 a.m. and order um, some Apri nails. So I ordered a kit about like a week ago and then I ordered some more tips and I've never used them before, but they seem like such a convenient way for people to have a great nail look, you know, without doing the whole acrylic thing. Like I'm an acrylic girl. I actually have a little gel mani on now. I actually soaked my nails off, but your I'm nails definitely... look so nice. I don't even want to show mine now. This is partly why I'm asking. I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> oh, well, a pre nails, they're really good. Um, but I also do custom press ons. So okay. another thing that I did work on was oh gosh, I don't know if they're gonna be stuck. Was um Louis Vuitton printed nail press ons. Oh, so Look light. at you. I love these. So they're like chrome nails. And then I drew like the LV print on. So I mean, there's so many different things you can do. But I think a pre nails are a good way to get like a nice look. I mean, they have different. Um, it's spelled A P R E S. Okay, I was gonna say A P R E S. Okay. Yeah. And they have different shapes and lengths. I mean, like literally like coffin, stiletto, round, square, short, medium, long. Um, and it's so cute. It's so small. They have like a little lamp and it's a simple, um, I want to say they have like a primer, um, a gel and, and like a top coat. You know, you get your polish and the top coat. For gel manicures, I'm going to say the Lamini macaroon this i looked those up they were all sold out last time I oh looked. really and i'm like oh, i'm gonna oh. keep looking because those keep are looking. the cutest things keep looking because each kit comes with one color and even my friend she bought it and she actually bought the bigger lamp and she does it at home on herself now um, so for those and, of you like this kit, oh yeah, you're gonna take it out. It's like literally yeah. like a little macaroon shaped little yes. blue light basically that you do your nails in. It's so yes. cute. And you do, you cure one finger at a time. So you press the button, I think it cures for 30 seconds. There's a little bug in here. Um, <laughs> and that's it, each finger. And with the color, it comes with a base coat. So all you have to do is, I, I wanna say one to two coats max and top coat and you're done and you can comes go. everything comes in here even when you want to soak off your nails they have the little soakable pads 
that you put each finger in and for 10 minutes and it should just soak off your nails. It's really easy. It's really cute. It's really it's great DIY. I'm so glad they found me on Instagram. I would never have known because they're really based in like Europe. Like Spain Perks of being a nail France. artist, cool companies find you. But it's <laughs> yeah. not selling other people's brands as we wrap yeah. up. Oh, thank you. I love these. <laughs> as, if we were talking about mine, maybe you're talking about Jasmine's. I don't know. <laughs> but as we wrap up, I want to talk about your product. Like you have a fabulous hand cream that I actually bought and it is amazing to use because we're washing our hands so much right now. At least I'm washing my hands a lot. And so it's like you, like this has truly been moisturized. It's all the way across on the other side. Do you oh, have yours or all running good? I have mine. Okay, cool. I have mine. So this is um, my Almond Joy whipped cream from my Honey Collection. It's my first and my only right now um, body product, but I wanted to introduce something that would be useful for all people, you know, clients, of course, included, because after you do nails and a manicure, you need lotion and you need something that's very moisturizing, but also for those people who, um, you know, know me or follow me or everybody needs lotion at the end of the day. <laughs> everybody needs lotion. And I really wanted to introduce and give something that I would believe in myself. You know, it has really good ingredients. It has vitamin E oil, shea butter, jojoba oil, tamanu oil. Um, so it's and the very... smell is so light and fresh, it's light. but it's like, I like how it's like, you can smell the almond and then I smell like a hint of cocoa at the end. <laughs> it's really yes, nice. Yes, it is. <laughs> Because I wanted to do something, I mean, I think naturally we gravitate toward smells, you know, but yeah. there's some people who are sensitive, who have sensitive skin, who are sensitive to smells and scents. I know people who are. So I didn't want to do something that was overpowering. I wanted something more neutral that everybody can use and that would ever, that everybody would enjoy. Um, so it's very light. Right now I only have one size. They're four ounces. So for people who are bicoastal or travel, you can travel with it. Um, and it's a literally like a whipped cream. And it's not, it's more, it's thicker than like, you know, whipped cream you would eat, but it's mm -hmm. very soft and, and smooth. Yeah. No, it is honestly really fabulous. And it, we are out of time, but I think wow, this so was quick. so much. We talked in so much in like 30 minutes and it was fun yeah, chatting with you. And I thought we would leave with your favorite Netflix or Hulu binge right now, just for some fun. Oh my gosh. Um, okay, so on Hulu, I was really into Good Girls. Yeah, I actually need to watch that one. That's the one where they're stealing the money, right? And they're, yes. like, they're like hustlers. That they're like, like mothers. A fun watch. Mothers. That's like, preppers. grab your girlfriends. We're all going to go rob a bank now. Not really. Yeah. But it seems like it would be fun. Well, it thank is. you for your time. I'm going to post all the tips and tricks that Jasmine spoke about and like, send you the links to her page and she's rep by Lisa Valentina agency if you guys want to book her if you're on the east coast or even if you're on the west coast and want to fly her out she's worth it she's worked with quest love yes. that is shanti and a lot of cool people and yeah thank you for your time did you have any closing words jasmine i just said everybody please be safe you know please continue doing what you're doing but also enjoy Enjoy the weather and enjoy uh, the summer to come. I flip the camera again. But yes, definitely. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Bye. Bye.